Welcome back to A Moment in History. I'm Seth Udinsky. In history, there are several monumental figures we can point to, people who lived during crucial times and helped shape the course of human civilization. In the West, we have several, Washington and Lincoln in our own country to be sure, but let's not forget the European figures like Queen Elizabeth, for example, or Martin Luther. But in Western civilization, none of these figures would have any real meaning or significance without the Roman Empire, which, in my opinion, second only to Christianity, is the driving force that laid the foundations for Western civilization. And no man in Rome was more prominent than its first emperor, Caesar Augustus. Now, Augustus had several titles. He was born as Octavian, but upon his rise in the Roman political sphere, he was granted the title of Augustus, which loosely translated basically means exalted one. He was born in 63 BC into the familial dynasty of the most important Roman statesman at the time, Julius Caesar. Octavius earned the respect and admiration of his uncle Julius, who named him as his adopted heir. And that's a practice that actually would become commonplace in the empire. Julius rose to prominence as the dictator of Rome, and he was essentially the first emperor over a dying republic that was morphing more and more into an empire. Now, upon Julius' assassination in 44 BC, civil war broke out between young Octavius, the rightful heir to the throne, and his political opponent, Mark Antony. Octavius defeated Antony and established his dominance over the former republic in the late 30s BC. Uh, also sparing the Roman populace from descending into chaos. Now, the official beginning marker of Octavius' reign is 27 BC, and it's here that he was given the title of Exalted One by the Roman political elites. Thus, historians name him as the first official emperor of the new empire, one that would lay the foundation, by the way, for an entire civilization. Octavius also took the name Caesar because of his familial lineage, and for the next 2,000 years, absolute monarchs in Western civilization would take this title of Caesar in various translations and titles. So Caesar Augustus was a skilled ruler, and he actually established the period known to historians as the Pax Romana, which in Latin means Roman peace. It was essentially the golden age of the empire, which would last for roughly 200 years before the crisis in the third century, which would lead to the downfall in the fourth and fifth. Uh, Augustus strengthened the empire's military force, and the size grew massively during his 40 years on the throne, stretching throughout Europe, Asia, and North Africa around the Mediterranean Sea. He accomplished peace through war, and this set the stage for Rome's dominance over the known world for the next 500 years. So the Roman Empire began with Augustus and lasted in the West until 476 and in the East until 1453, though as we said earlier, the civilization has continued in many ways to this day. Augustus died in 14 AD, replaced by his adopted son Tiberius. Now we have to mention, his most famous mark on history among all his accomplishments was actually the census he enacted around the year 4 BC because this forced a young Jewish man named Joseph to take his soon-to-be bride to the city of Bethlehem where she gave birth to a son and called his name Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for joining me once again for A Moment in History.